My name is Zeb Figuera, and I'm here to talk about a problem that we've been facing in the uh, wine project that I think we're going to need the kernel's help to solve. Uh, so wine is a free software project that comprises a Windows executable loader and a re-implementation of the Windows API. Um, I've worked on wine for about six years. I've worked on a lot of different areas during that time, uh, both high and low level, for, for you know, comparatively. <laughs> um, when it comes to the kernel, I have exactly uh, one patch in the kernel. It's to fix this little device here. Uh, um, but in this presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about a low-level problem that we have in Wine, which is that our implementation of Windows synchronization primitives is too slow. Um, so, I'm going to so I'm going to talk about the problem that we have in detail and uh, about the uh, solutions and workarounds that we've tried so far. And about the solutions and workarounds that we've tried so far and um, how a kernel-based solution could fix this problem. So uh, one of the interesting challenges we face is in Wine is that we implement the entire Windows API in user space. Um, so the question of interest to the uh, Linux community is, I think, uh, what happens when a Windows program makes a Windows system call into the, into the Windows kernel? Um, so for some system calls, we can just translate to an equivalent host system call, like uh, file IO just becomes read and write, and a memory allocation goes to mem map and so on. Um, and usually, usually the match isn't perfect, so w Windows tends to have very over-engineered uh, kitchen sink kind of APIs. Um, which are sometimes possible to implement on top of uh, simpler Unix POSIX ones, but usually we have to do some internal bookkeeping. Um, so we have to implement uh, or implement a whole kernel alg algorithm in user space. Um, so, uh, and some parts of the kernel do with a shared a state that is shared across multiple processes. And so for that, we have the uh, wine server, which is another user mode process, um, but it implements a lot of the things that a kernel would. Uh, so anytime you have a cross-process state that needs to be managed, the wine server gets involved. Um, and anything that would be a system call uh, then becomes an RPC request to the server process. Uh, and one of these things is synchronization primitives. Uh, so, obviously, RPC to another process every time you do a system call is not the fastest, uh, but in the majority of cases, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for over t and for over 20 years, we've been doing uh, cross-process synchronization and everything else this way. Um, but recently, more and more programs... Oops, wrong one. More and more programs, especially games, are making use of parallelization. Um, and this is a screenshot of GPU viz. And basically, uh, in, in, the, in that bottom row with the CPU graph, uh, every little row represents a CPU, and every uh, colored box is a, a, is a different thread. Um, and, they, and so when you have a colored box, that represents a, that represents a time when a thread is on CPU. Um, so this is, a, this is a relatively modern game. Um, you, uh, you have games like this with 16 threads all constantly trying to synchronize with each other. And in order to do that, they have to call down to the wine server. And you can see the wine server process is basically pegged at 100% CPU. Um, and, the, in these, and the other processes are just spending all this time off CPU waiting for the wine server to reply. Uh, it's a pretty severe and proven bottleneck in a lot of games. Uh, and avoiding, avoiding this overhead can literally double the uh, frame rate of a game. Uh, the largest part of this overhead comes from the fact that Wine Server is a single-threaded process, but even if it were to be made multi-threaded, which is possible but not a simple task, uh, I believe RPC to another user mode process is not going to be fast enough to match a kernel implementation. And of course, all of these calls are one syscall on Windows. So we think that's probably the right approach forward. So how do we solve this problem? Um, I'm going to first explain the problem space. So, uh, what's the, so first, uh, I need to explain a handle. Uh, what is a handle? A handle is a file descriptor. Okay, 
So I'm not talking about handles. <laughs> um, so yeah, a, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's not really that complicated and it's mostly not of interest to the kernel, because, but I, I want to uh, add this for completeness's sake. Um, handles are, uh, the handles are like file descriptors. Um, you can have, and you can you can have multiple handles in different processes that point to the same kernel object, which is a file description, in Unix parlance. Um, and in and in Windows, you have handles representing a lot of different uh, types of objects, more I think than in in uh, Linux or Unix usually, but. The important ones here are the synchronization primitives. And there are three types of synchronization primitives, which are the event, mutex, and semaphore. And they work about like you would expect. Um, an event is a single bit of state that you can flip to signaled or unsignaled. Uh, a mutex is a simple recursive mutex. And a semaphore is a your usual semaphore. You can acquire up to a maximum counter and release it. And the wait function is essentially like pull, um, where you pass a vector of objects and an optional timeout, and it tells you which object ended the wait or if it or if you timed out. But as you may notice, there is no API to acquire a mutex or semaphore, and that's because that's what pull does. Uh, acquiring and waiting are the same operation on Windows. Um, you can also create an event that gets acquired when you wait for it. So this is the basic way uh, Windows synchronization primitives work. There's just three objects and you acquire them by waiting for them. Uh, it gets more complicated. <laughs> uh, so here's where the Windows API goes from good straight to ugly. The, so the first weird thing is called pulse event. Uh, and what this does is if any thread is currently waiting on an event, it wakes up that thread as if the event was set uh, signaled, but it doesn't actually flip the bit. Um, which begs the question, how do you know whether the thread is actually waiting? And the answer is you don't. But the way it was actually used in practice, and I say was because it's very rare nowadays, um, is you'd use it on a recurring timer. So it doesn't really matter if you miss one or two wake-ups. Uh, mutexes have a, their own little ugly detail, which is that uh, they're tied to specific threads on an OS level, and if a thread dies, um, well, they have built-in support for uh, abandonment, which is like AP thread uh, robust mutex. Um, but you can't turn it off. This is just on for all mutexes on Windows. Uh, semaphores are okay, but the wait function has two interesting problems where one thing is you can, instead of wait, returning as soon as any object is signaled, you can return as soon as all of them are signaled at the same time which is not the same thing as waiting on them one at a time um, because objects can be signaled and then unsignaled. Um, and the other ugly part is this thing called an alert, which is kind of like Windows's version of SIGIO, but it's done completely differently. Um, instead of setting up a signal handler um, at the kernel level, you basically, every time you do a wait, you specify whether you want to get an alert signal. And if you do get one, then the, then the kernel will call your user space uh, IO function for you, and then it'll return back to the, uh, excuse me, it'll return back to the wait function with a special return value that says uh, that you were woken by an alert instead of anything else. So this is the problem space we have. Um, is there a user space solution? <laughs> It's uh, a common bit of wisdom that you can implement any synchronization primitive on top of any other one. So um, a few years ago, I started looking around for a primitive that specified or that satisfied all of the the, all the major constraints we have, which are you can do a vectored weight and you can use it for multiple processes. And uh, Linux has one that's, that uh, satisfies this, which is eventfd. So. I wrote an implementation that, um, where each Windows object is backed by an event FD and some extra state for bookkeeping the more complex objects that's, uh, in, that exists, that lives in shared memory. And it works, and uh, a lot of applications get uh, big performance improvements from it. Um, but the uh, but the, there, there are some problems. Um, wait for all is very badly emulated. 
um, because you can't just do that with poll. We kind of have to hack around it. And uh, Pulse is even worse and basically doesn't work at all, um, which is particularly unfortunate because most applications don't even use those APIs, especially not the modern ones. But we can't have a broken implementation in the wine tree. And so I've had to maintain these patches out of tree for several years. I'd like to find a better solution. Um, soon afterwards, I wrote a variation that uses few texts instead. Uh, this eventually led to the Futex wait v syscall, which is in the kernel now. Um, the idea was that since Futexes are faster, assuming they're uncontended, uh, that this would be faster than, than the eventFT version. And in artificial benchmarks, it is, but in real-world applications, the difference is basically never enough to matter. Um, it's certainly faster, it's again faster than the server, but it's about on the same level as the event FD uh, implementation. And of course it has the exact same problems. Um, you can't do, you, you, you still can't do a wait for all and you still can't do a pulse correctly. Um, I've, thought, I've thought for quite a long time about other ways we can do this in user space. Uh, and, and really the big problem is those two APIs, the so wait for all and pulse. Um, because in order to implement them right, you really need uh, control over the underlying wait queue implementation. Um, but, well, these objects are cross processes, so we need our wait queues to be cross process, um, which is which makes things very complicated. Uh, I've, I've, I've tried, I've thought about implementing a wait queue in shared memory, um, but then you have this, then you have this problem where you need to take internal locks on the wait queue. And so, and the wine server also needs to take internal locks on the wait queue. And the wine server is has kind of a security boundary where we treat it as a sort of a privileged process, even though it's still user mode. Um, we don't want one process to take down the entire uh, wine virtual machine, as it were. Um, so that's not going to be acceptable upstream, even if we can make it work. So. After trying a lot of different user space solutions and uh, none of them, I'm managing to make none of them work, I tried something else, which is I tried to write a simple kernel driver that implements all of these operations in the kernel basically directly. So every you know set, uh, reset, wait operation is just an IOCTL. IOCTL. All the wait queue logic is implemented in the kernel on top of your schedule, on top of schedule and wake up thread. So all the hard parts are taken care of by the kernel in this case, um, and everything works correctly. And, uh, uh, and, and for, for, for the mutex uh, uh, thread knowledge, uh, I, in order to avoid hooking into any other code, I basically uh, have the wine server send it, uh, keep track of thread IDs, and it sends a request to the um, to the driver to. Uh, mark all mutexes owned by a specific thread as abandoned when we detect from user space that, that thread dies. Um, all the complicated front end stuff, all, uh, so yeah, all this, so all, so all of these hard parts are done in the kernel. All, all of these, all the complicated front end stuff about handle management, that's still done in user space by the wine server because we still don't need the create and destroy and open things to be fast or all these special objects. All uh, these special objects that you can also wait on are sort of, uh, we, we pretend they're an event underneath. Um, and, and it works. Um, it provides the same benefit as, as the event FD and Futex implementations do, but, uh, it also, but the has the add benefit that it also doesn't break everything else. Um, so this this is a benchmark from Total War Saga Troy taken by Dmitry Skvortsov. Um, you can see the optimized version is running at 157, 158 FPS, whereas the uh, version that goes through the wine server uh, runs at 109. So it's almost a 50% improvement from that. Um, some other games have even greater improvements. So this is a collection of various games uh, from different people on different hardware. Excuse me. 
Many of these, uh, many of these, uh, as you can see from the table, do make 60 FPS even with unmodified wine, but they're also uh, taken on really relatively powerful hardware. And so, where, so you're going to see the same improvement on any hardware that is CPU bound. Um, so, what are the next steps then? Um, I originally wrote these patches, intending to submit them as an RFC to the kernel, and uh, and maybe that is the right option. But uh, in the spirit of the uh, Linux Plumbers Conference, I figured I would first uh, give a presentation about the problem and see if there's any other thoughts on how we can solve it, whether that's user space solutions that we haven't considered or other ways to design a kernel interface. Um, uh, so uh, you know, one thought I've had is instead of writing this uh, self-contained driver, can we, can we um, fit this solution into the existing APIs like pull? Um, but I don't really think this is a, I'm inclined to think this is not a good solution. Um, because first of all, pull really is not designed for atomic weights. Um, and it's not really designed for weight for all either. And adding, thing, and adding these things, which are kind of ugly APIs in the first place, uh, it, seems like, it's, it seems like it would complicate a lot of things. It seems like it, uh, it would be a, a, an easy way to break things and, and re really encourage people to use ugly APIs that should really never, ever be used by anyone. <laughs> um, one other idea that I had on the train ride over here, which was um, we believe that the biggest bottleneck is the context switch itself, the syscall. And we, and we believe this, uh, well, first of all, all these APIs are one syscall in Windows. Um, and when developing these, uh, the event FD implementation, I found that even making two syscalls instead of one uh, was, you would see a noticeable drop in performance from that. So you're really trying to minimize the number of syscalls we make. Um, so, and knowing that, maybe there's a way that we can, and this is a very half-baked idea, but maybe there's a way we can uh, do a syscall trap to another process, which um, without, with, with, without, you know, making a lot of context switches and, 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 and waiting for that process to be scheduled. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of complications around how you'd handle virtual memory and such. Um, I don't know if this, I, I, I'm not knowledgeable enough to know if this is even, if this is immediately infeasible, but I thought it might be an interesting enough idea. And frankly, it could be useful in other ways. I mean, um, there's, the, you know, if, if in the future other parts, uh, more complicated parts that are not so self-contained need to be, need, need to be faster. Um, or, or has implications for uh, wines. Um, we have a we have we have a sort of limited support for running real Windows kernel drivers, which believe they're in a kernel and they're actually running in user space, and all their hardware access gets sort of virtualized, and it's it's complicated and very low level right now. But it's it could there's uh, some things that could be useful there. Or um, you know maybe there is a real user space solution that that I haven't considered. Um, I've certainly thought about this problem for a long time, but I'm only one developer. Um, or maybe there's a better way to do this in the kernel. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, with, with that, I, uh, that's, that's all I have uh, for a presentation. I guess it, it's a little shorter than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, so the proof of concept kernel driver is linked here, and it's also in my uh, in, in the page on Indico. Um, if you have further questions or comments after the conference about synchronization or anything else in Wine, please uh, feel free to reach out to me at my email address. Uh, thanks to uh, my company Code Weavers for bringing me here, and you know if anyone is interested in working with Wine or other parts of the Linux stack, we are uh, currently hiring new developers. And so with that, I will. Open the floor to questions, I suppose. Okay. If there are any. <laughs> okay.
I'm going to start off with one question. Have you been looking at the impl potential implications of working with the real-time patches that are going upstreams and what you've been working on here? I have not. Um, okay. I, I'm, so, yeah, I, I'm, so did, did, I'm not aware of, is, does the real-time, you know, make RPC significantly faster is a, is a, big, is a big question. Um, we do, because all, all the RPC DeWine server goes over a socket and, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's not that it would make it faster so much it makes it deterministic. It's just it's going to be there. So that's sure. Why it's it's worth testing. At it's least. worth looking at while you've got people here. Anyone else? Okay. So I have a question. Uh, do you have the same problem also for the KID event API and uh, for therefore for the new style, uh, what do they call it? Slim locks or something like that. So, uh, so KID events. So key events, I think, are cross -process. Um So sorry for those that don't uh, really enjoy that much uh, Windows uh, synchronization primitives. Key events are kind of the Windows equivalent of futexes, so to speak. Uh, yeah. Well, so so there so it, it gets more complicated. So Windows has a couple kernel APIs that deal with um, what's supposed to be in what's supposed to be like single process synchronization. So. Um, Excuse me. So key events are one. Um, there's this other thing called a thread ID alert. The thing about these is they're they they're not exactly exposed in the same way, and I think they're only supposed to be used from a single process. And so all of these so all of these AP, other APIs that are used for synchronization, we can actually just implement those right on top of Futex, and we do. Um, and so they're not. And so those aren't a problem. Um, and. <laughs> You know, you'd think you know your your games and applications would be using those APIs, but most many of the, and some of them do. A real world use case for you know doing fast cross process synchronization, uh, especially with things like um, cross process rendering and and management. The question I have is, when you look at like event FD versus the few Texas, like was pull always the problem in both those cases? Like you would have to fix pull, or would would this be easier to fix on event FD or few Texas if you were trying to build out something there? Like, are, and is there a is so, there is there a possibility that something an API here could be useful for other things? You know, that's why I would I would the distinction I would have between doing the separate driver you've got the concept of is that's very specific for your use case and that, probably, yeah. that could be accepted on that grounds. But if there's something that could be useful for everyone. So, so the main thing about it is, um, so, so the, the, the easy parts you can, the thing about it is, is most of the things you can do with your event FD and pull or, or with the Futex uh, uh, vector. The problem is the, 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 the big problem is, Pulse, which nobody should ever ever use. Microsoft even deprecated it. Um, and wait for all, which I don't know that I've ever. S the thing about wait for the really unfortunate thing about wait for all is like I don't even. I think people that even do use it, they don't depend on the very precise semantics that it has, which is it's one atomic operation. I think people just they want a convenient way to wait for a bunch of events at once instead of having to one by one wait for them. Um, that's my that's my suspicion. That's but so I think in terms of having this so I think I, I think there's not really anything that would probably be usable by other um, consumers, but I also don't have a lot of experience out of wine. I certainly, I, I know the, the people who tend to care about um, these things are, you know, database stack, and I don't have a lot of uh, experience in the database stack. So if there is somebody who could, you know, potentially give an answer on that, it would not be me. Yeah, it um, seems that the, the, Performance justification, like it's pretty considerable performance increase with these um, yeah. kernel space um, synchronization primitives. Out of curiosity, I don't track the Wine project super well, but would this, if this um, patch was to be accepted, the kernel would this be the first time that a kernel patch was made uh, exclusively to make some functionality in Wine perform better, or has there been precedent for this in the past? This isn't coming up, so. So. 
Yeah, so the Futex Sweet Pea was originally for wine, but it had other users. Um, we, yeah, I mean, wine does not, uh, has not tended to require a lot from the kernel, partly because we can implement it all in user space. Um, there is a current, there's, so there's also a, a talk that's going out at the exact same time. Uh, uh, there's a current uh, effort to uh, implement uh, uh, the WriteWatch API um, uh, that we, where we need to, yeah, it has some very complicated semantics that we can't do fast because in order to do, um, in order to do it slowly, we need to uh, uh, catch signal access on, on write, to, um, sorry. Uh, basically, Windows has a copy and write uh, sort of API, and uh, we need to, and and we can implement that slowly by catching signals. But um, there's there's a current uh, effort to get that, and it's not quite upstream yet. But I think that also has other users too. So this would probably be the first case where we really just need this just for wine, just to make things fast. Um, I can, uh, for some parts I like the technical depth, but I have some gut feelings about your approach and I think you should uh, um, try to upstream your current approach. I, I really think the self-contained version is a good start because then you have can have this separate driver and people see what you need. And uh, I, I think chances are, if it's, I mean, you can, uh, Give the reason of the significant performance boost, and uh, if it's a self-contained driver, why not have it? So I think the I could imagine it's well received. The only other gut feeling I have is if the IOCTL interface is could be if there's a, maybe a better solution, but I can't give you one right now. I just wonder uh, because IOCTL interface these days are usually frowned upon, but sometimes it's the only thing we have. But uh, in general, I tend to think go for it. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, we got one more. Okay. But could you do something that's kind of like a halfway between? Doing a complete driver with all of these IOCTL APIs for each sort of thing, or just doing something that's like, hey, this is just one IOCTL that does what I want with poll, you know, re reinvents poll, but just with that one extra semantic or that extra piece, so that you still use a few texts or event FDs as the, the base of it and you build just the one piece. Because so, so few texts is kind of, you, you can't really do this with few texts because. Because in order, because one of the things you need is atomic consume on weight, and that's not something you can do with a few texts, because they're really just not designed for that. Um, I looked into not implementing, not extending poll specifically, but um, the problem. I I, I I I tried to look into retrofitting some some extra stuff into Event FD, and I and when I looked at it, it was. The way the way the, the I don't remember the details at this point, but the way that poll is hooked up with InventFD really just I, I couldn't find a way to do it without messing with the poll like uh, method in general and upheaving everything else. So, um, I, I so that might be an option. I could try and look into it again, but I suspect it's not going to work. <laughs> So since you have any way to combine these uh, primitives with all the other handle types, uh, is there a way to combine uh, one, uh, like the fast path uh, in, uh, in, in user space, uh, full user space, and uh, the slow path in either kernel or one server? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that you have thought about it. No, it's no just... that, was, that was specifically a thing. and I. I did try this, um, and the problem is because you can because you can wait on any object with any other object at any time, and you don't know you don't know which ones are going to be used cross process and which aren't, um, or which ones are fast and which aren't. You can mix any sort anything in a wait. Um, 
And often you will, you know, you'll wait on an event or a thread and say. So, so how do you combine this kernel driver with the uh, other handle types? So the so the other types um, so so for so for example you have uh, threads which are signaled when they exit right it's like it's your it's your PID FD um, and basically what we just do is um, so the, the the driver exposes like a, a um, IDs based on an X array and so and so underlying so underlying an event we have an event but underlying a thread is just an event and the wine server decides when to signal it. It does a set event call internally on that. Okay, so you turn those others into these ones. Yeah. Okay. They're okay. they're they're basically all events. Um, we've got on the chat um, from Rahul. Uh, since this is the first time Wine is looking at upstreaming a kernel module, what's the project strategy for handling kernels that are missing the module? In its build slash distribution, it will not be a hard requirement. Uh, okay. This will, and 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 for that matter, Wine supports uh, all sorts of hosts. Um, uh, you know, we, we 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 try to run on any anything Unix, and we have a um, compared to many projects, we have a very very uh, permissive uh, approach when it comes to. Uh, requirements um, there, when it comes to you know version and. The dependency requirements so we we have fallback paths for pretty much everything cool so yeah in that case we'll basically just fall back to the old implementation on the server okay i think we've got all through the question so thank you very much okay. and uh we'll probably have a few minutes before yeah. the next speaker but sorry i didn't intend it good. to be that quite that short but <laughs>